This programme contains five short video clips aimed at pupils in years three to six. Each lesson starter is a self-contained item which can be used to inspire a range of persuasive writing activities. I think school uniform is a good idea because people would know that you're from a school and you can you you can be proud of your school. If you're like in a museum and you're lost, but you have school uniform on, they know you're a part of a school. When I'm with my friends and I'm wearing the same thing, I feel safe. If you choose school uniform, it's much quicker, but if you spend loads of time choosing your own clothes, you'll probably be late for school. Some people can't afford really nice clothes. People might not be as rich as other people, so they might just wear scruffy clothes and people might make fun of them. The reason I do enjoy wearing my own clothes is because I can express who I really am, my personality and my feelings. If I own school uniform, it's just plain blue and, you're not, and you don't have any like colour on you. If you're wearing school uniform, you, you just can't choose and be free to wear what you think you could wear. I chose this top because it's a really nice top and my jeans and they're my favourite jeans and my shoes. I think it's really good because people, it's your personality. Well, I think school uniform is a bad idea because, um, well, your mums and dad have to spend too much money and, like, every single year they have to keep on buying your uniform. When you wear your jeans and your t-shirt, you feel like you're more at home and you don't have to worry about like if you get your jumper messy or something like that. Kentish Town in North London, where high street shopkeepers tell us about the positive and the negative sides of their local area. Kentish town is really a town, you know, and it's got a sense of togetherness. You know, when you are in town, you know almost everybody. Even if you don't say hello to them and, you know, if you are not friend with them, but you know that they are from Kentish town. And there is still a very strong sense of community. It's mainly private shops, that's in my opinion. If you look in Kentish town road, it's very few chains in Kentish town road. There isn't the big shops you can find in every single high street. I lived in Kentish Town for about 25 years. Uh, you can come for everything. You know, you can come to buy your daily uh, needs, your fruit stalls, uh, fish uh, shop, butcher shop, pharmacies, uh, shoe repairers, key cutters, DIY, whatever you name it, we have on the high road. For the vandalism and bad behavior. We don't encounter it very much, especially in this stretch of the road, on the main high street. And in my opinion, Kentish Town is coming up and up and up. Transportation is excellent in Kentish Town. You have got a tube station. You are very close to central London. I mean, any bus from here goes to central London and only three, four stops from Oxford Street. So it's a very, very nice place to live. It's a very cosmopolitan area. There's a lot of people from all sorts and walk of lives. I'm sure at any one time we can hear so many languages. It's not dominated by one culture, no, it's different. The area's gone downhill. There's a lot of shops that have shut. I mean, originally we had seven shoe shops, six dress shops, now it is nearly all restaurants. 
We feel that the supermarkets have played a major role in, in eroding a lot of the independent stores that were here. They're coming back into the high streets to mop up whatever trade there is left. It affects the smaller retailers, the smaller general grocers, uh, but people do vote with their feet. They're trying to get you to check out yourself automatically, and I think that's terrible. There's no one-to-one -one anymore, and you can't talk to a machine, quite frankly. One of the biggest contributors was the introduction of controlled parking zones in the area, which was very, very instrumental in watching 25 independent retailers disappearing. Well, like all areas, it has go and no-go areas. There is certain areas that you would not go into in Kentish Town. I've lived here all my life, and years ago we could go out and not worry about leaving the door open, a window open, or anything. There's no cinemas in Kentish Town at all. There used to be three, and now there isn't one. There was one at the top, which is still called the Forum, but it's not a cinema now, it's, they have gigs on there. But it's, it's a shame, there's no community spirit about it anymore. I don't think there is. Young campaigners from an NHS smoking awareness group hand out leaflets outside a busy London station. Some people who do smoke, when you tell them smoking's bad for your lungs because it puts tar in it or you're also harming other people's lungs as well, it sort of makes them think about what they're doing more. A lot of young people smoke because it's more of a status thing people around you who smoke will think that you're more cool. I got involved because my mum used to smoke, and, I, and my parent, both my parents used to smoke. Uh, my, I stopped my mum smoking, uh, and my sister stopped my dad. I sort of felt it was quite a nice thing to help people by stopping them smoking. And then when Alexis told me about the group uh, and how I could help, I thought I may as well get involved. Thank you. If your parents smoke, it makes you much more likely to smoke because it isn't just parents will get negative effects, it's the children as well. Up to 17,000 children under five are taken to hospital every year with smoking-related illnesses. With tobacco products such as cigarettes, they're so addictive because of the nicotine in it. The body craves the nicotine and the more you smoke, the harder it is to give up. In cigarettes, there are over 4,000 chemicals per cigarette. Once you've burnt a cigarette, it releases more and more chemicals. So you get other substances like tar. They think that's now inside your body after just one cigarette. It's really awful. And it's just giving people like the knowledge about these facts that makes them less likely to want to smoke. Stop Smoking advisor Sarah Morris briefs the team on their next task, counting cigarette butts to work out the number of smokers in a particular area. Um, and then we'll come back in a couple of weeks and see if it's decreased and see if it made an impact. OK? All right, let's go. A lot of people say that it reduces stress during exam sort of times when you're revising stuff. People are using it to combat stress, but they're not really fully thinking about all of the negative effects. One of the things I get from being part of this group is that you sort of get a sense of accomplishment, thinking of ways to help. There's always that sort of sense of, I've done my part for like society almost. We asked some animal lovers to tell us about the advantages and disadvantages of looking after a favourite pet. I like to keep chickens because because they're very they're very pretty and they oh yeah and they lay eggs so so in the morning you can get up and you can eat their eggs. We change their water and then we give them their seed. These are our leftovers. 
So you put the food in and then you can you have to close it and put the brick on to make sure they're really safe. My favourite one is the brown one and her, her name is Beryl. They're special because not many people my age have them and I just feel I go and I got really attached to them. The big disadvantage is that we used to have three chickens and um, one night we forgot to put them in and I saw the fox running up in the morning and, and then we checked and the one was gone. It was sad because she was, she was a really pretty chicken. These are yellow-bellied terrapins. They're called so because their bellies are completely yellow. They're mostly meat eaters, but they'll eat pretty much everything we put in there. Bits of lettuce, carrot, anything. They do really funny things. They push each other around, so they're good. They're good fun to look at. At the back here, we've got a thermometer, which keeps the water at a nice 27 degrees Celsius. Here they've got a rock, which they can climb up onto and sleep during the night, or they can sunbathe during the day. This one here is our male terrapin. You can tell because he's got nice long claws here. They're such fun because they always make me laugh whenever I'm bored. I'll just come down and look at them and they cheer me up. The downside is that they eat a lot, so they grow really fast. We're on our third tank because they've grown so quickly and new tanks are very expensive. This is Dizzy. Um, she's a very nice hamster. Very, very cuddly. She's very cute and she is very friendly. She doesn't bite at all. And, but mostly she loves her ball that she likes to roam around in. So I normally put her in here while I'm cleaning the cage. So I'm just going to replace all the old bedding with some new bedding because it's important that she's nice and warm. And now I'm going to replace her food because there's not much in there. There we go. The water needs refilling as well, it looks like it. She's quite acrobatic. Um, I think she just does this for fun. I think it's quite incredible how she grips on with her little claws. <laughs> The main disadvantage is that she's nocturnal, so she just keeps us up all night, really. I mean, we have to take away her um, wheel because it squeaks when she runs on it, even though she loves it. We have to take it off in the night because it just keeps us up, really. And also, she's not awake in the day, so we don't... I mean, unless we wake her, we don't really get much to see much of her. 